Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. I like my Harley Davidson motorcycle a lot. Always when I return home, I have the same problem. The garage door is closed and I have to stop, take the gloves off and search for the opener. It would be cool if I would be able to come home and the door opens automatically. To achieve that, I have to hack and clone my garage door opener, put the newly created clone below the saddle and connect it permanently to 12 volts. Then the clone would send out a signal as long as my bike is running and the garage door would open as soon as my bike appears. Wouldn't this be cool? So let's start the hack. It consists of three steps. One, to find the frequency and the modulation of the actual garage door opener. Two, to decode the secret code sent out to the door and three, to build a new device to emulate the current opener. The easiest way to find the frequency and the modulation of your device is if you get this information from the supplier. Unfortunately, I did not find the info. So I choose the second possibility, to hack it and find it out myself. To find a unknown frequency, you need either a spectrum analyzer, which is capable to scan a whole frequency band, or you need a receiver, which is capable to do the same. Spectrum analyzers are very expensive and not available for all hobbyists. But fortunately, a new technology is available for all of us because it costs less than $10 and does exactly what we need. It can receive a wide band of frequencies from a few megahertz to well over a gigahertz. And it is called Software Defined Radio or the abbreviation SDR. There are many videos and other descriptions about SDR in the internet. So I will not go into details on how to install it. It consists of a small USB dongle with an antenna, which is usually used for TV reception. It can be bought for less than $10 on AliExpress. Bright people wrote free software to use these dongles as universal receivers. The software I use here is called SDR Sharp. After downloading and starting the SDR Sharp software, it is quite simple to find the frequency of the device. Mine works on 40.68 MHz. If you have a closer look at the frequency spectrum, you see that it has two strong signals which are about 5 kHz apart. This is a strong indication that my device uses frequency modulation with a digital signal. Frequency modulation means that the sender varies its sending frequency according to its input signal. And digital means that the sender only transmits two signal levels, 0 or 1. One therefore means that the sender transmits on a higher frequency and zero means that it transmits on a lower frequency. So we have now solved the first point of our list. We know the frequencies and the modulation. The next part is to find out the transmitted code. To do that, we have to demodulate the signal to get its digital representation. Fortunately, this can also be done by the very same SDR radio. In our case, we have to use narrow FM demodulation because the signal has only 5 kHz bandwidth. Now we can hear already a signal. And if we hear it, it should be possible to record it. Fortunately, SDR Sharp has a functionality to record the signal to a WAV file. If you select audio, you get a WAV file in the SDR Sharp directory. To analyze WAV files, we can use another free software. 
or the city. If we open the file, we see a nice digital signal consisting of packets. Looking at the packets, we see that all are the same. Now we can have a look at the timing. My sender uses short and long signals. The short signal is 0.5 milliseconds and the long signal is 1 millisecond. So the clock rate is 500 microseconds. With this knowledge, we can translate the signal string into a string of 1 and zeros and write it down. So point 2 of our task list is done. The last step is quite easy for me, because the frequency of my device is around 40 MHz. And a nice chip exists which can create such frequencies. The AD9850. This chip is programmable and can create different waveforms on frequencies up to 60 MHz. Modules with this chip are available on AliExpress and libraries for Arduino exist also. So the plan is to connect such a module to an Arduino and write a small routine to create the signal based on the code extracted before. Unfortunately, it's not so easy. 500 microseconds are not very long for an Arduino and the available libraries are not optimized for speed. Both standard libraries are too slow for our purpose. It takes them about one millisecond to change from one to the other frequency, which is two times too slow. What to do in this situation? The AD9850 chip itself is able to do these fast frequency changes. That's at least good news. So I have to dig into the sketch. The AD9850 can be connected with a parallel or a serial interface. Because in the final device I want to use a small AT tiny chip, I want to use the serial interface. The available libraries create the serial signals themselves by changing the ports with normal digital write or shift out commands. The advantage of such a concept is that you can use all ports of Arduino for connection. Fortunately, a faster way to create serial signals exists on all Arduinos, the SPI interface. The UNO has one SPI interface with a clock and two data pins. Because we only want to transfer data from the Arduino to the AD9850, we need two pins. Pin 11 for the data, it's also called MOSI, and pin 13 for the clock signal. To set the frequency of the AD9850, we need to write a 32-bit number into four 8-bit registers. Fortunately, I found a project which does exactly that. I enclose the link below if you are interested. The sketch is rather simple. I define the secret code I found out in my analysis in an array. In setup, the SPI interface and the port are initialized. The AD9850 chip needs a value which represents the frequency. To calculate this value, you have to have a look into the datasheet. The output frequency is calculated by multiplying a 32-bit word with the input clock frequency and by dividing this value by 2 to the power of 32. My module has a clock rate of 125 MHz and the value of the so-called tuning word is 139775157. This is the value for the middle frequencies to start with. The lower frequency has to be 1250 Hz lower and the upper frequency 1250 Hz higher to get the 2500 Hz shift. The next lines put the tuning word into four byte values and shift them out into the register of the AD9850. As soon as the FU underscore UD pin gets a pulse, the AD9850 starts to produce the new frequency. 
The pulse could be created by normal digital write commands. Here I use a faster way, called port manipulation. If you are interested in this topic, I also enclose a link in the comments. To get the right timing, I wait for the rest of the 500 milliseconds and continue with the next bit. When the entire code is transmitted, I wait for 6 milliseconds and start the whole process again. The last step is to adjust the frequency of our hacked sensor to the original. We start again SDR sharp and send a signal from both sources. At the beginning you might see a difference. The difference can be adjusted by changing the tuning word. At the end, both signals should look the same. If you want, you can demodulate the hacked signal and check it. I was too lazy and took the Arduino and the AD9850 to my garage. And, what a surprise, the door opened. Problem solved. Now I still have enough time to reduce the size of my new sender, put it into a 3D printed case and mount it to my motorcycle before spring arrives here in Switzerland. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!